Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Um, my name is Adelik as usual. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about something a little different. Uh, I want to first say a shout out to all my friends, all my fans. Thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I just encourage you guys to you know, you know, hit me up whatever needs you need, uh, topics you want me to discuss. Today, uh, I want to talk about metabolic acidosis, acid basis disorders, which is one of the biggest concerns for medical students. Everybody hates metabolic acidosis. Ah, acidosis, alkalosis, it's ridiculous. So uh, today I'm going to try to go a little slow so you can kind of like uh, keep up with me a little bit. But like as usual, I'm going to try to break this down for you as easy as I possibly can. Uh, so that you just don't have everything all jumbled up. Because the problem is you have this information floating around. But you just don't know how to apply it. You know? So let's see what we got. Because I'm going to try to time this so we got to spend about uh, um, 9 minutes per lecture. So that we can move on from there. But this th this lecture is all about introduction. You know? Nothing too heavy yet. We're going to the next chapter. And we, you know, we start taking that one piece at a time. Okay? Alright. So what do I want you to know first code? You know the rules of the game. You got to know the mechanisms. It's all about mechanism, guys. So let's start. The human body is a whole, you know, organism, right? And we constantly have blood moving through our blood vessels, our blood vessels, right? And blood has to be maintained at a certain pH. And last time I checked, you don't want your blood to be too acidic. That means you spill a lot of acid in it, or too basic. It's way too much base in there. So your blood, because the body has to maintain this homeostatic balance, it needs to maintain at a certain pH. So, one of the biggest things you have first have to understand is your blood has a pH, like I mentioned right here, between 7.35 and 7.45. That is key. That is key because the net, you know, what I'm going to talk about in a minute is tell you why this is important. The next thing is to know some other parameters because once you have this, it's like, you know, kind of having a uh, little keys in your pocket. Any door you go to, you can easily unlock it. Um, it's understanding what is the about normal appropriate uh, pressure for uh, your partial arterial pressure of CO2 is 40 millimeters of mercury. I bet you guys probably already heard this before, but I'm just reiterating it. Um, you want to know the actually the normal bicarb that's supposed to be in your blood. Bicarb is like a buffer. It kind of helps you buffer your blood. Doesn't want it to go too far down or go too far to the right or to the left. Not too acidic, not too basic. But I'm not. I don't want to really. Uh, say too much, but make sure you memorize this. Unfortunately, there's some memorizations in medicine, so just the way it is, you guys know this. But the biggest thing, aside from this guy, is this formula right here. When I say this formula, this is all you have to know. And once you know this formula, guys, it becomes a piece of cake. And I promise you, by the time you're done with this lecture, you will appreciate this formula because it's a cheat sheet. Somehow people don't want to memorize it. I don't know what it is, but this is where the bread and butter is, guys. So, what's this formula? This pH on the left, which is basically stating the pH at which your blood is supposed to be at all times. And on top in the numerator is bicarb. If you just you can either take out this hydrogen ion and just put just bicarb here and PaCO2. And we're gonna kind of talk about the relationship in a minute. Then, on top here, you want to just write metabolic. I don't care what it is, just metabolic for now. And at the bottom, it's just respiratory. So here's the problem with your body. The body has blood inside, running through all the blood vessels. Your heart is constantly pumping blood to organs, to your kidneys, to the brain, to the liver, to your gut, right, to your muscles. And at the same time, your, your the lungs is doing what? You're respirating. So basically, there's metabolism going on, metabolic, and there's respiration. So while we are alive, let me remind you one more time. We all have to breathe in oxygen. Oxygen has to go into your blood. It goes just through our VLA system inside your lungs. It gets into the bloodstream, pumps it, goes through the heart, right? Basically uh, making our oxygenated blood. This oxygenated blood needs to get to those tissues because they need the oxygen because why do we need oxygen again? Oh, I remember. We need it for energy, right? We need oxygen to burn things. 
Where? The electron transport chain. <gasps> oh my god, that's what I learned in college. Yeah, I remember. Med school first year biochemistry. Oh no. Yeah, I might be talking a little about some biochem, but it's very basic stuff. Electron transport, you need that oxygen, what? Accept those protons. Bam, with some hydrogen ions, becomes water, and eventually CO2 is made after breakdown of glycolysis. You're able to respirate, you take that CO2 out of the tissues, right? Because they have to burn this to make what? ATP. The ATP is used to generate what? A lot of sodium, potassium, pump channels, kind of maintain balance between intracellular and extracellular homeostasis, right? Whatever it's been pumped. But you need that energy. That's basically why we breathe. Then that CO2 can't stay in our body, right? It has to go out to what? The respiratory system. So you start with metabolic and eventually you work your way down to the respiratory. And they're kind of compensating for each other. So one is still working too hard, the other one compensates. So hmm, did I just use the word compensation? Yes, I just did. Now let me let me tell you a little bit about this formula. Why extremely extremely important you guys know this. If you don't know anything anymore, know this code. So let's start. When you have metabolic on top, there is a direct relationship between pH and bicarb. So let's try it out. pH equals to bicarbonate. It's a direct. It's basically inversely right proportional. Sounds like physics, but it's really easy. That means whatever happens on the left, let's say bicarb goes up, automatically pH has to go up. This is just intro, guys. I'm not even gonna talk. About it. That's why I'm not using the word acidosis or you know alkalosis yet, because the next topic we're gonna be taking that one piece at a time. If this goes down, right, automatically you expect the pH to go down, and we'll talk about what that means in a minute. Just note that relationship. It's a direct one-to-one -one correlation. Now let's take this guy and this guy. pH, right, is actually inversely proportional to arterial partial pressure of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. That means what that is telling you if is pHCO2 goes up. Since inverse, automatically your pH has to drop, right? If pHCO2 goes down, automatically your pH has to go up. And we'll talk about this relationship because this is weird, the bread and butter is, guys. Because by the time you figure it, you're like, no. Yeah, I know. I know. It's that easy, guys. So when I say, which I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to get a little hint in a minute. When bicarbonate increases, your pH is going to increase. And if your pH increases, right, last time I checked, if you look at your acid, right, so let's say acid is on the left and base is on the right. So high pH, right, is basic solution. A low pH is an acidic solution. So if your bicarb is too high, just using words here, simple, let's make it really simple, like general chemistry, your pH is will be high. So, too much base, you become, you become a basic solution. If it's too low, it becomes acidic because the pH is going to drop. The same thing right here. If pHCO2 is too high, what's going to happen? Your pH is going to drop, which means a low pH. If what? If your pHCO2 is too low, automatically your pH goes up, just make it alkalotic. But now we're going to really apply it soon, but before I go on, how about this? Oh, our nine minutes is up, so we're going to start the next lecture. I'm going to try to uh, cut the lecture so we can get them all in nine minutes, okay?